Hello and welcome to this instructional video for an 8 by 6 foot winter garden glass house. It can be a little bit daunting when it first arrives in its two crates, we've just taken the strops off, but with this instructional video and our handy instructions, we'll get through it in no time. You'll need a power drill, Phillips screwdriver, tape measure, a level, spray bottle and some scissors. It's also very important to have a spare set of hands. Today I've got Shannon from Winter Gardens here to give us some great tips and advice. Also, make sure you choose a fine day. Important elements to consider when choosing a site are sun, water access, the slope, drainage, and wind. So I've chosen an area that's on the southern side of my garden because it's gonna get full sun pretty much all year round. It's also an area where I can fit a water tank and most importantly, using my timber framing, an area that I could make level the easiest. You can do a concrete footing, you can do a timber footing, or you can just use the corner stakes that come with the smaller greenhouses that go straight into the ground and just drop it into concrete pockets. Make sure you check out the Winter Gardens website for a full explainer on foundation options. Start by finding all your base elements and laying them out on site. In your component bag, you'll find your hex head bolts and your brackets. So the first thing we're gonna do is take off this little peel, yeah? Yeah, just one side. And start winding in your hex head bolts. Just a couple of winds. So we're just putting these into the bottom two holes of these straight brackets. So like two winds is all you need there. Start sliding them into your base. In your instruction manual, we've got the configuration here of the brackets that go in. Um, in your case, we're putting some extra ones in because we're mounting it to this timber. Now add four hex head bolts to each corner bracket. Slide them in and secure them. You want to make sure that your top and bottom joins are flush. And once they're all in, measure from corner to corner to make sure everything is square and check your level. Now place your L608s and lower door track on the base. You can also line up your vertical brackets with the punches in the L608. It's time to open your T-head bolts. Everything from now on is T-heads, correct? Correct. Having a pocket full of lightly wound T-heads will serve you well. These are our braces. Yep. Two of these on every corner. Yep. Slide your first T-head into a bracing bar and groove. And tighten with your impact driver. Lift in your corner post. Check your length to make sure it's a sidewall piece. You don't want to be putting the roof ones in. Line up the grooves, place a T-head bolt in, and then slide over the W05A bracket. So now you can see that it's got a slot there which is gonna fit your T-head bolt. As you can see, this is a pretty tight spot to drill. This is the tightest spot, I think, in the whole greenhouse. Once it's tight, secure the two lower T-heads as well. As you can see, there's a dimple at the end of these T-heads. Because once the T-head goes into the channel, you can't see the T-head but you can see the dimple, and you wanna make sure the dimple is perpendicular to the channel so that you know it's locked properly in place. Now get your L606 beading strips and place them around your base. So we're gonna hook this all the way around, except for not in the two slots where the door's gonna be. This is what your glass will slide into. First bit of glass, exciting! Place it in and adjust the vertical corner post so it's level. And then we're gonna Get it so the glass is square in there. Wow, okay, it's gonna level it up for us. Secure the brace and insert your first sidewall panel. Then a sidewall upright. Now it's time for a louver. This is the sidewall louver box. Um, we've got two pieces of blade louver rubber that goes in the top and bottom. A bit of CRC will help. Arrange your sides, pre-wind your brackets with T-heads and place your louver frame pieces into position. I'm just trimming this rubber a little bit because uh, I want to make sure it clears these louver blade mechanisms. And tighten. Important to have louvers in the glass house? Yeah, it does help with airflow. We usually recommend a two to one ratio of roof fence to sidewall louvers. Back at the glass house, we're repeating that front corner. It's braces, corner post. I think that's the hardest screw to get in in the whole greenhouse. <laughs> and glass panel. They'll fit perfectly between those beading strips. Now it's time for the inner gutter. And you can see it's got one side a little bit longer. Make sure this is the one that's going down, otherwise you're going to have some problems later. And keep an eye out for those little ridges. So the inner gutter has a little ridge right here, and just make sure that it's sitting on top of your sidewall uprights. Now insert the louver. And it slots into the sidewall upright, and it slots down into the beading. 
It's real snug, just fits in there really nicely. Then drop down the next upright. Slide it down into place. Whoa, that's snug. Beautiful. Yeah. And tighten the T-heads. Now there'll be two small screws in each side of the louver. And insert the glass. Just kind of go one side and then the other. Get it lined up. And then they just kind of pop into place. You see there's a little ridge right here. Ooh, 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 look at that. Slide down the smaller glass wall panel and place one small strip of two mil beading. It's just for this one section of the greenhouse, um, just above the sidewall louver. So that's where that goes. Then keep moving around your walls. Okay, so now by this point, it should be worth noting that the eight foot models, the front and the back are gonna be exactly what you're seeing in this video, but if you're doing a six foot or a 10 foot, the fronts and the backs are gonna be a little bit different, right? Yep. So, it's time to get out those instruction manuals if you're building a different one. Insert your panels, then your uprights. Just making sure these channels have got no grit in them, so that glass is gonna sit in flush and we're gonna have room for our rubber later. Keep the supply of pre-wound T-bolts ready and always check they're secure. I screwed in the T-head bolts, but as you can see, it didn't catch the extrusion behind it, so that's no good. Loosen it and try again. Once you've completed the back wall, add your bracing. It's just another support for the back wall. We'll just use this as our guide. Now it's time to prepare your rear wall brackets. Same thing with these guys, just peel the plastic off one side. Check your instructions for the exact pieces you'll need and then pre-wind in your T-bolts. I'm gonna put our roof corner up and this corner extrusion is gonna, it sits on that ridge. I can feel that it's sitting on that ridge. Slide your corner bracket in. Okay, so now we're just gonna lock that all in place. Place the small horizontal extrusion on top of the glass and insert and secure your T-brackets before inserting the triangle piece and a couple of small pieces of beading to keep it in place if it's windy. Brown stripe towards you. Put okay. your other roof corner on and find your L507X locator tool. And we're just gonna locate, make sure that the two corner pieces for the roof are in the right position to accept the roof. Tighten your final brackets. And now we have this solidly in place, so we're just gonna take that out. Fits nice and snug, so we know our roof ridge is gonna fit. Then continue assembling your next wall. Again, insert your glass panel, then your uprights. Just make sure it's flush against the, against the bottom here. And assemble the final corner with bracing before placing the inner gutter in. The roof corner needs to meet up with the ridge of the inner gutter, which it's doing there. And the sidewall corner needs to meet up with the inner gutter ridge as well. Tighten your T-bolts. So if you're doing it with a mate, it's good to have them always checking those ridges. If you're doing it by yourself, you want to come around and make sure. Back and forth. Yeah, yeah. So awesome. It's much easier to do it with another person. Now we're on the front wall, placing that last vertical front panel and uprights. Now's a great time to check all your T-head bolts are secure. Bolt your two roof corners on and using your locator tool, test that spacing before bolting it in place. Okay, so we're gonna put this one up in here. Now we've got some handy little bits of rubber again just to keep it in place. It's gonna make us a little bit more secure as we manage this two-person job. So all our walls are now up, except for these two, but of course, there's gonna be a door here. The one big difference you have on this wall is you're gonna look for this bar with the two holes in it. That's gonna go right here. Bolt the door bar into place. This is where it's super important to have two people on it, one person for holding. Now it's time for the roof ridge. We're gonna take it up and it's gonna just insert in exactly how that spacer was before. And you guessed it, T-bolt it into place. Now let's build the roof. Take your roof uprights and attach them to the inner gutter and roof ridge. It's just this little ridge here you just want to sit on snugly. And that is gonna mean that it attaches perfectly. If you haven't already, it's time to decide where your roof vents are going. Place your roof vent parts and glass out on a flat surface. I just like to spray a little CRC straight into the bag. Okay, and then that just lubricates all of your little screws there. Good tip. We're working as if we're outside the greenhouse, like this is the, the outside part of it. And you wanna make sure that the little C shape at the top of it extrusion is down. 
And then also on this end, so this is your bottom part of your extrusion, you've got these two holes where you're gonna, you can either put your manual vent latch or where your auto vent would go. That is also facing down away from you. Line the screw up with the receiving hole and tighten them using a screwdriver. Now you'll need the smaller rubber beading strips. One is two mil and that goes on the vent top and bottom. And the other is four mil and that goes on the sides. Top tip, hot soapy water on the rubber. Make sure the stripe's facing you, not the greenhouse. And push it into place before cutting it at the ends. For a manual vent, screw in the banana latch. And for an auto vent? This has a wax cylinder in it that um, expands and contracts with the temperature. Using a 4.5 mil drill bit make the hole slightly bigger. And tighten in the screws. When placing the vent into the roof ridge, lift it at a high angle and place the small circular end into the roof track. Beautiful. Look at that. It's time to insert your roof panels. So make sure someone's holding this until this gutter is in. We don't want this slipping out and coming down on you. Insert the outer gutter and move it below each panel after it's been inserted. Health and safety. Don't want to hit our heads. For your vent windows, insert your smaller panels and then attach the lower vent bar and brackets. Attach the bottom of your vent. Insert the wax cylinder and screw it in before placing in your final glass panel. Make sure your outer gutter is flush. A little more, a little more. Lay your door elements out on a flat surface. As you can see, there's like a bigger part and then a smaller part, this is where the wheels go, this is where the glass goes. Insert your door, cast the wheels into the bottom of the frame. And there's this access hole, and that is so that you can get in a screwdriver in here without taking apart the door, and you can adjust the wheel up and down. Push the frame into place. You got this U-shaped metal piece here, and this actually fits snugly, kind of hugs that extrusion there. Then it's as simple as screwing in the four corners with glass inside and inserting the rubber beading. Again, a hot soapy spray will make things much easier, as will a Winter Gardens beading tool. Oh my god, this makes it so much easier! <laughs> then repeat all of the above on the second door. Time to attach the door rail. So we're going back to the hex heads, no more T heads, uh, and we're going to slide these down the inside of this rail looking for these two holes and centering it up for our door rail to hook onto. Tighten the bolts and insert the door tracks. You want to make sure this door track is clean and keep it clean. Now we put in the door. Beautiful. Add any final supports. And your structure is almost complete. Get your beading tool and spray bottle ready and start at the bottom of your wall panels. I just kind of lift the glass and you hear that pop. So it's just moving. There's a little bit of a ridge in the channel. It's moving. So now it's fully seated at the back. Make sure the brown stripe is facing out. Just roll it in so the stripe disappears all the way. Take your time. Try not to stretch the beading because it has a tendency to stretch back into place. So if you stretch it out. You'll bead everywhere except under the gutter, under the roof ridge and around the vents. As soon as you put that rubber beading in, there's no more rattling and the, st the structure is just super solid. Now, beading on the outside here, obviously a little bit tricky with this big brick wall here, but on this wall, if we take off this bracing, we will be able to bead on the inside. One of the final things you'll do is build your shelves. Pre-wind your T-heads into the brackets. Choose your height and using a level, tighten your brackets into place. Add the outer shelving supports and then place the shelving slats onto the brackets. But underneath there is a bolt channel right in the middle. I'm gonna go lock in and that locks your shelf into place. And finally, your end cap bag. Um, it's got our plastic end caps that are sort of like the finishing pieces. Screw the gutter, roof ridge and door frame ends into place and you're done. A brand new Winter Gardens glass house. A place to escape the cold, extend your growing season, and enjoy all year long.